Good morning, good morning, guys. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, a lot of you had asked for an update on um, budgeting now that I'm a single mom, and so that's what today's video is gonna be. It's gonna be a laundry chat, fold your laundry with me video. If you're part of the paid community on this channel, um, so you get access to an additional video a week, we do a lot of these um, laundry chat videos and you guys who are community members always say that like it's your favorite type of video. So it's just gonna be as if you were a girlfriend over at my house and I'm just folding laundry and talking to you about life. <laughs> So if that's your vibe, you will like today's video. So let's get started. Um, I do sell a program that I call the Fun Functional Budget. And in that, I talk about how I started to initially set up a budget for myself when I was um, a teenager. Um, I moved out super young, I moved out at 16. And so, you know, when that's the case and you still need to make ends meet, you need to figure out how to work a budget. And so that's what I did. And so it's the same budget that I have then continued to use through various stages of my life, whether I was you know, a teenager, really struggling to make ends meet, when I was in my early 20s and you know, uh, having a little bit more money because I had a full-time job, but you know, still definitely paycheck to paycheck. Um, times in my life where I've made much more money, you know, as a, as a family, um, it was the same budget that we used as a family. And then now that I'm a single mom, it's still the same system. So I can say with absolute certainty, whatever your situation is or whatever amount of money that you make, that, um, that program will work for you. And I know that because I have made everything from 10,000 a year to like 130,000 a year myself at various times of my life. So anyway, um, if you're looking for like specifically how to and step by step how I set up the budget, am I recording? Yeah. How I set up the budget, what goes into it, that sort of thing, then all of that will be, um, outlined in the PDF ebook, which I will have linked down below. So I'm not going to go into that. I'm just going to talk about things that I had to kind of tweak and things that have changed um, now that I'm a single mom. So obviously money is tighter now that I am a single mom. And um, again, none of this is anyone's business in terms of like the money aspects. And I know fully that I don't owe anyone like the specific numbers of anything. Um, and because out of like privacy for Dan and my kids and myself, there's obviously certain aspects I'm not gonna be discussing, but basically uh, Dan pays child support and we just go by what's called the table amount. So on there's an online calculator that the government has put out of what the government states is a fair amount and you literally just put in what your tax return income was what their tax return income was um, after taxes and how many kids you have how old the kids are and it literally just spits out a number and tells you that that is um, it gives you a low mid and high range uh, but it basically tells you what your child support amount would be and if you go by that amount it's called the table amount that's what like the court system uses um, so then there's a whole bunch of factors that can alter the table amount like let's say you have a child that has special needs and requires extra um, assistance or there, you know there's a myriad of things let's say you made an X amount one year but now you're unemployed or now you're making a lot more money. There's lots of things that would change what the table amount is. Uh, but for our purposes, um, we just went with the table amount. So outside of money that I bring in myself through working, the only other income I have is that table amount, the child support amount. So, um, you know, in some ways things have gotten easier because Dan gets paid weekly and so I used to have to work the budget on like a week by week basis because he got paid weekly 
uh, whereas now he gives me, um, uh, you know, set amount on the first of every month, and then it's up to me to budget that throughout the month. So, you know, I have, in terms of what income I get, I have child support, I have my money that I make through AdSense on YouTube. So there was an ad that ran before this video. There will likely be an ad somewhere in the middle of this video. And I make a very small percentage um, off of the ads that run. So how long you watch that ad for will determine how much I make off of the video. Um, there's a lot of factors that go into that. Um, but essentially, you know, with, with YouTube, it depends on what your audience, it's not based on subscribers and it's not even necessarily based on views. Um, it's a CPM based, it's a, so it's a rate based on your audience retention. So how much of a video your audience is watching, everything on YouTube goes by minutes watched. It used to go by like subscribes and views, but it doesn't anymore, which is why you know, the amount of subscribers that a YouTuber has does not necessarily dictate how much money they make as a YouTuber. Um, cause you can have 10 million subscribers, but if your minutes watched isn't good or your audience retention isn't good, your CPM will be much lower. And so you can have some YouTubers that have like, you know, 20,000 subs that are making more money than a YouTuber with 5 million subs. There's so many things that go into it. Um, so I make, you know, some money from my AdSense and it's a decent amount, but, um, you know, it's variable. It can change, uh, depending on factors, as I said. And then the other income I have is if I do any sponsorships, then obviously I charge companies or agencies for that. Um, you guys know that I don't take a lot of sponsorships. Um, I'm very picky with what I take. Uh, and you know so for me i would rather earn less money and make sure that i'm only taking sponsorships uh that really add value to you guys and and make authentic sense to me but that is how i make money so through adsense sponsorships um and then programs i sell like my ebooks um and the membership group so um the weekly vlog membership group i make money off of that again you know it's not a heck of a lot listen i am not complaining uh but i do also just want to be transparent you know there's about a thousand people in that membership group um and most are most of you are paying uh 99 cents us a month so i make about a thousand dollars a month from the paid membership group um a little more a little less depending on different factors, but I don't make that full amount, right? YouTube takes 20% of that. Uh, but that is how I make some money. Um, and I am so blessed that I get that aspect of revenue, um, from you guys. It has made this channel possible. Um, I wouldn't be able to spend the hours that it takes to keep this channel running. Um, if it wasn't for that, me the income that I get from that membership group. So, um, I am so grateful to all of you that are community members. Uh, and then we have an income property. So this is still considered a matrimonial home, even though Dan and I aren't married anymore. We acquired the house once we were married. Um, and so Dan put a down payment on the house. So he is entitled to that money because I didn't put a down payment on the house. Uh, but we are both choosing to um, continue to contribute to the mortgage on this house until it is up for renewal. Um, so, you know, every, depending on what you sign, but for most people, every five years, your mortgage is up for renewal. It's the term, it's a five year term. Um, so we have four and a half years left. So we both decided that the, uh, what worked best for our family was to just kind of keep status quo. So I pay half the mortgage um, and half the property taxes and Dan pays the other half uh, because you know he's the other owner of the property. Um, and then in four and a half years, I will either buy him out of what he is entitled to for his half of the equity of from the 
you know, day we got married up until the, um, when we sell the house in four and a half years, um, how much equity the house has built, he will be entitled to have. So I can either give him that money and carry the mortgage on or my, on my own. Um, or, um, if I can't afford to do that at the time, then we will sell this house and split the profits of the house 50, 50. So, um, you know, right now, that's just kind of what we've been doing. Uh, so those are some liabilities that I have still. And, uh, and in terms of income, so we have a rental property that, uh, there's an apartment above the garage and that is too small for Cohen now. There's an apartment above the garage. And so, um, the income that we get from that property, Dan gets half and I get half, but we both get a little bit of income from that property. We also have solar panels on our roof um, and we make money off of that. And so again, Dan gets half of that and I get half of that. And that has just been, you know, what has worked for us and what we worked out as what works for our family. And there's no, you know, when people get separated, there's no specific one way to do it. And there's no right way or wrong way. Um, you know, Dan and I both have been super blessed that we are still very much friends. And so no one is out to screw anyone over. No one is out to, you know, make anyone else destitute. Um, so we just figure out what's best. And we're like, does this work for you? Does this work for you? Um, and because we're friends and because we don't hate each other, we can, we just figure it out. Um, so those are kind of my expenses. So I carry hundred percent of the bills. So the electricity, the water, the gas, um, phone, internet, um, you know, my own car insurance, my own life insurance, um, anything, any kind of day to day bills, cell phone. Did I say that? Um, and then I pay my portion of the mortgage and property taxes and, uh, house insurance. So that's kind of, you know, what the budget looks like right now. And so what I do is I just plug that in through the steps, um, in the way that I work my budget and come up with an amount that's okay. Here's what I make in a month here's what the income is in a month. Here's what the expenses are in a month. And how do I work that to balance them both? Um, and, or, you know, what do I need to make to make ends meet? And so, you know, I rely on my YouTube, um, AdSense memberships and programs that I sell as my income. And then I also do consulting, so I do marketing and consulting for other YouTubers, um, which is all confidential. Um, like I, I don't talk about who I work with, um, but that is extra income. So any income, um, I mean, it counts towards what I make in a year. Um, as far as like Dan and I are concerned with, you know, child support amounts and stuff, but from a budget perspective, all of that money goes into savings for me. Um, to, you know, build up an emergency fund and hopefully at the end of four and a half years, be able to buy Dan out so that I can stay in the house. Um, to be honest, this house is bigger than I need, um, or bigger than I want. Um, but it's in a great neighborhood. My kids have friends. It's a beautiful home. Um, I love my neighbors. I'm very close with my neighbors. It's very close to where Dan is living. It's close to Dan's parents. So, you know, for all of those reasons and more, if I can stay in this house, you know, that would be ideal. Um, if it was just me, I couldn't care less. I could easily live in a tiny, I could live in a legit tiny home. Um, you know, if it was just me, I, I couldn't care less about that kind of thing. But, you know, because there are kids involved, ideally I'd like to stay in this house if I can. But you know what, if it turns out that I can't and anything changes, um, or I can't buy Dan out, then that's okay too. You know, I'll figure it out when the time comes and I'll, you know, move if I have to. And whatever the future holds, um, from that perspective is also fine. Um, that's one thing that this whole journey has really, um, helped me with is because I grew up with a lot of 
you know, trauma and domestic abuse, I always equated control with safety. And if I didn't feel like I knew exactly what was coming around the bend at any given moment, I got a lot of anxiety because I couldn't control it, right? Um, and I have been given an opportunity to learn that it's okay to not know, it's okay to not have everything figured out, it's okay to live in a bit of a gray of like this is what works right now and it will change at some point and it might change at some point and I don't have to know what that looks like today um, and it's okay. You know, it's okay to not have every single thing micromanaged and planned. Um, it's been a really beautiful lesson for me to learn and to sit with that discomfort and process it until it's not uncomfortable anymore. I mean, it's been such, it's been such a blessing and I've really, it's been an opportunity for me to really grow as a person and really, you know, um, move through some of my anxiety so i've been you know super grateful to be able to learn that lesson and continue to to learn that lesson um so yeah i mean that's that's pretty much it i'm not rolling in it by any means but i'm certainly um you know fortunate for what i have been blessed with and the income that i have been able to generate for myself as an entrepreneur. Um, I have always been someone who works hard and gives 110% in everything I do. Um, and I've always just been scrappy that way. I've had to, you know, moving out so young, I've had to be scrappy and make sure that I can make ends meet, you know, in any situation. So, um, you know, the, a major thing is living within my means. I've had times in my life where I've made less than I'm making now. I've had times in my life, obviously, where I was making more than I'm making right now. And I haven't been any more happy or less happy um, as a person through different financial um, times in my life. Um, you know, money can reduce stress for sure but it, it doesn't bring lasting happiness. It can bring some peace of mind, but it doesn't bring lasting happiness. And, you know, I'm making significantly less than I was making when I was married, um, significantly less than I was making when I had my vlog channel, and I am significantly happier <laughs> and significantly at more peace in my day-to-day -day life, and I wouldn't change it for the world. And you know, you guys have noticed and you have said that like the amount of DMs that I have gotten from you guys just saying like how happy you can tell that I am and how much more at peace I am with myself and um, my life and how much more grateful I am for myself and my life and the simplicity of myself and my life. Um, it means the world to me. You know, this certainly has not been an easy year for a myriad of reasons, but it's been a great year. It's been hard, but it's been good. And I have learned and grown through struggles and I'm grateful. So um, I hope that that answered questions and I hope that that cleared some things up. And I hope that if you're a single parent or if you're you know, working through a time in your life where you are reworking your budget and, and having to do that, I hope that that sheds some light. I mean, honestly, the two main things is that I live within my means and that I make a budget and I stick to a budget. Those are really the three things. Um, so I hope that's helpful. If you're wanting to learn more about like exactly how I budget, again, I will have that link down below. And if you decide to purchase that, that obviously helps me out. Um, and yeah, that's it for today's video. So if you enjoyed it, if you learned something, please let me know in the comments what you learned. If you enjoyed it, I would love it if you gave this video a thumbs up. If you're newer to my channel and you're not subscribed, I talk a lot about minimalism and intentional living. I also do a lot of cleaning, organizing, and decor videos. So if that's the type of thing you like, then you probably will like my channel. So I would love it if you hit the subscribe button. Also, make sure you're following me on Instagram. I'm at l.linquist and I will see you guys next week. Bye.